It's another Mat Day again with you here with Teacher Jenny. Join me in for another discussion on the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation for your probability distribution. So how do we find our mean for this, the probability distribution here? Now we have formula for your mean, but if you don't want to use that one, you can actually make use of a tabular method in which you will be making use of your table. So how to find a mean using the table. We are going to simply add up one more row in which that row will hold the product of your x and the probability. So let's start with the first one. So we have 0 times 1, 8 is 0. 1 times 3, 8 is 3, 8. And 2 times 3, 8, that's whole number and fraction multiplied. We're just multiplying the whole number and the numerator of your fraction. So 2 times 3 here, that will be 6. And we're copying our denominator as 8. Next, we have 3 times 1, 8. That will be 3 times 1 as 3. And then we copy our denominator. So after that one, we'll be adding everything on the last row. So adding up, we have 3 plus 6 because they are similar fractions. So we can simply add it up without any problem at all. So 3 plus 6, that's 9. Plus 3, that will be 12. 12 over 8, that will be... Um, equivalent to if we wanted to reduce, we can extract our 4 out from 12 because that is common between 12 and 8. Okay? And also extracting 8, but I mean, extracting 4 to your 8 as well. So the resulting fraction now is 12 divided by 4, that's 3. 8 divided by 4, that's 2. So we have that as 3 halves, and that is our mean. So when you use your tabular method for your finding the mean, you actually have to add up the last row on it, and that will be your mean. So next we go for finding the variance of the probability distribution with the same distribution here. So how to find your variance here? You can use up your formula there, or you can make use of the tabular method, which will be adding two rows here. The first row that we'll be adding, we have that one as your x squared, meaning to say we'll be squaring up your x value. So we have 0 squared, that's 0, 1 squared, that's 1, 2 squared, that's 4, 3 squared, that's 9. And so the next row that we're adding is your x squared b of x. Okay, so again... We had this one a while ago, a 0, 1, 4, 9. So we're adding another row, which is x squared p of x. So this is simply the product of your x squared and the p of x. So this is now 0. This one is 3, 8. This one is 4 times 3, that's 12. We copy our denominator as 8. 9 times 1 is 9, and then we copy our denominator as 8. So we'll be adding this one up. So this is now 3 plus 12, that's 15, plus 9, that's 24 over 8. This can be reduced to 3 as the answer on that one. But wait, you do not have that one as the variance yet, because unlike your mean, by the way, last time, or on the previous... Um, or a while ago, we have the mean, right? So unlike your mean, we're just adding everything up on the last row. But for the variance, we're not doing that one. We're not considering the sum of the last row as your variance. Because when you say variance, that is the distance of the data away from the mean. So we'll be needing the mean in there. Now, moving on the mean or going back to the mean value, we have that a while ago as three halves. So using that one, we'll be finding our variance. Variance here will be equal to, this is by the way, our symbol for the variance. We have sigma squared for that one. So variance will then be equal to the sum here of the last row, which is three, minus, minus, because we're looking for the difference. As I mentioned, um, that is now the difference of the data away from your mean. So we have here um, 3 as the sum. Take note, this is taken on the square of your random variable values. So automatic will be also squaring our mean for that one. 
So we will be squaring 3 halves. And that will be equal to 3 minus. Squaring 3 halves would mean we are distributing our 2 to the exponent found on the numerator and so with the denominator. So this means we have 3 squared here. That will be 9. 2 squared, that will be 4. So subtracting, this is whole number and this is fraction. So we will be expressing our whole number in terms of fraction so that we can subtract. So this is now 3 over 1 minus 9 fourth. And in subtraction, we have to have similar fractions so that we can subtract. So we'll be multiplying this one here by 4. And we are doing the same thing on the numerator, multiplying it by 4, so that we do not change our fraction. So this is now equal to 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 1 is 4, minus 9 fourth. So the variance here, which is sigma squared, will be equal to 12 minus 9, that is 3. And then we have to copy the common denominator, which is 4. So here we, we go with our variance. So we want to find the standard deviation. So standard deviation, we do not make use of the table here because right away, once you have your variance, you can actually find right away your standard deviation. So variance a while ago, we have three for it for that one. And finding the variant, the standard deviation, standard deviation has a symbol, which is sigma. So that means to say we're just getting the root of your 3 fourth in here. And your standard deviation now is equal to 0 0.87 if we round it off to the nearest hundreds. So we have this as the standard deviation. So I hope you learned something from me on solving for the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation for the probability distribution. So that's it for today. And I'm saying good luck to everybody for the upcoming test. Once again, this is your teacher Jenny saying goodbye and see you on my next video. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Thank you.